Uh, hello, everybody. So uh, what we're going to be looking at today is uh, section 3.1 in the book, which is tangent lines and secant lines, uh, or tangent lines and instantaneous rates of change, actually. Sorry about that. Um, but specifically, um, this is a lecture that's going to cover part three of the homework. Okay, so um, hopefully this will help you out uh, for the problems in that particular homework set. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to try to explain to you the basic concepts and then just do uh, sample problems for most of, of this lecture here. Okay, so here's um, the, the main idea of velocities and rates. So the derivative of a function uh, f of t no, um, at a point. So the derivative of a function f of x, nope, f of t, I had it right the first time, sorry. Uh, the derivative of a function f of t uh, at the point uh, t equals a, uh, written f prime of a, is the instantaneous rate of change of f of t at the time t equals a. Okay, so whenever we're talking about instantaneous rate, instantaneous, oops, that's not what I wanted. Whenever we're talking about instantaneous rate, we're talking about a derivative, this derivative. Okay, um, and velocity, where velocity has to do with this, is that velocity is just the rate of change of position. So if uh, f of t measures um, the like distance traveled, basically, uh, an object is traveled by uh, time t. then the derivative or instantaneous rate instantane instant instantaneous the instantaneous rate of change of f of t is going to be measured in uh, distance over time And what that means is that it's a velocity. Okay. Um, and so that's where we're going to start. So instantaneous rate of change of a function in general is the derivative. And, um, instantaneous rate of change of a distance is a velocity, right? So like, uh, like how, like how fast is your position changing? All right? That's another way to say how fast are you going? Okay, so velocity is distance over time, uh, which is going to be the derivative. So um, therefore, so um, the derivative f prime of t, no f prime of a, um, of a function f that measures position to measuring position or distance. is instantaneous velocity, we could call it. Okay, so I just wanted to write those down um, before we get started on problems and that will really help us out. Okay, 
Um, now, having said that, um, there's a lot of different word problems in here. They all boil down to just taking the derivative or estimating a derivative um, of a certain function. So uh, most slash all problems in the section And so the homework is um, section 3.1, part three, velocities and rates. Uh, involves estimating the derivative at a point or finding the derivative at, at a point. So finding or estimating. Okay, so everything you know about derivatives, you can apply here. Um, so let's um, let's just look at some examples. And any any new concepts, I will explain to you as we go. So let's look at examples. So here's our first example. So our first example says uh, a toy company uh, can sell X. Uh, gaming systems, gaming systems at a price of P of X equals negative, this is negative, doesn't look like it, negative 0 0.01 X plus 450 dollars per gaming system. Okay, a company can sell X gaming systems at a price of negative 0.01 X plus 450 dollars per gaming system. So what that's saying is uh, the negative on here is saying that um, the more that you sell, the more gaming systems that you sell, the cheaper uh, each gaming system could be. So like if you have 100 of them, maybe you sell them for 400 dollars. But if you have a thousand of them, maybe you could sell them for 380 or some smaller number. Okay, so a toy company can sell them. All right, uh, what are we doing? Uh, the cost um, of manufacturing them uh, X gaming systems is C of X which is 300X plus $9,000. So over 9,000. Uh, find the rate of change of profit. Find rate of change of profit uh, when 1,500 uh, gaming systems are sold. And then it gives you a note here that says uh, profit uh, is, it says price per gaming system uh, multiplied by uh, number sold. then subtracting the cost from the price. All right, so they just give that note to tell us how to do it. Um, okay, so here's what I notice about this. So when I'm looking at this, what I notice is first of all, what they're asking me to find. They say, find the rate of change of profit when 1500 gaming systems are sold. So what that's telling me is, um, I see that uh, 
our answer to the question um, is a, a rate of change of profit. when uh, 1,500 systems are sold. So like, for example, if profit was capital P, so um, the P that we have so far is a uh, lowercase p uh, price. So if I use capital P for profit, um, then what we're looking for is uh, we're looking for um, capital P prime of 1500 okay because capital p prime the derivative of p that's the rate of change so that's what we're talking about when we go up here and i say um the derivative i used a t here for like a time uh variable but it doesn't have to be there's other kinds of rates um and the derivative is the instantaneous rate of change so if they're asking you for a rate they probably want you to do a derivative. So that's what we're doing here. We're looking for this derivative, okay? Um, now, in order to do that, of course, we know we need to know the equation of profit. So we have to come up with that. Uh, so find an equation for profit first. Capital P of X uh, first. All right, so um, what do they tell us? So what is X, by the way? X, they, they mentioned it. They decided on that, right? They say uh, the cost of manufacturing X gaming systems. X is the number of gaming systems manufactured. Number of gaming systems made. Okay. Um, now C of X is uh, cost per gaming system. Oh, sorry, price per gaming system. Oh, and it's P, sorry, P. Do I have a C? No, okay, P. Uh, price per gaming system, there's no cost. There is, but that's not it, okay. Price per gaming system. Okay, uh, we also have uh, capital C of X, and capital C of X was um, the cost to make X gaming systems. Okay, so I'm writing all that down because um, we should be able to come up with the profit according to the rule that they told us, right? They told us how to calculate profit. So um, the note they gave us, the note given says, I'm not going to rewrite it, but uh, P of X is going to be profit. And so P of X, profit. Um, how do we find it? Well, let's look at what we have here. It says profit is the price per system, that's P, multiplied by the number sold, right? So the profit is the price per gaming system, that's P of X, times the number sold, which is X, And then what? Multiplied by the number sold, then subtracting the cost from the price. Okay, subtracting the cost now. So we subtract the C of X and there we go. So this is what they say. The price per gaming system times the number of systems minus the cost. And the cost doesn't have to be multiplied by X, I don't think, because if we look at it, I believe the um, the cost was specifically the cost of manufacturing X gaming systems, not per gaming system. Okay, so that doesn't need that multiplied by X. Okay, so this is our equation. Now, once we have our equation, we should fill in what everything is. So fill in the P of X and C of X. Now, I'm not going to scroll up. I've got it up on another screen so I can see it. So I'll just write it. So the P of X was negative 0.01 X plus 450 
And then we've got this x, so that's uh, times x, minus the cost, and the cost was uh, 300x plus $9,000. Okay, so this is our equation. Now, before we do any math on this, we should simplify it, okay? So before we try to find a derivative. So um, let's just uh, uh, simplify before trying calculus. So if I'm going to simplify this equation, I should multiply the x by everything here. So negative 0.01x squared, and x times 450 is plus 450x. And then this minus the cost, the minus goes on both of these. So it's going to be minus 300x minus 9,000. Okay, so the p of x is negative 0.01x squared. And then we can combine the 450 and the three, the 300 and get um, it's negative 300. So we have plus 150x minus 9,000. Okay, now this is not the answer. This is just the profit equation. Oops. So this is profit equation. Okay, now once we have that, we go back to the problem and say, well, what are we supposed to be looking for? We're supposed to be looking for P prime of 1500. Okay, so we need to find um, P prime of 1500, the rate when 1500 are sold. That's what we were told. So we need to find P prime of 1500. So um, this is either easy or hard. Um, wait, hold on. What? Okay. They say we, they want it in dollars per gaming system. Okay, no, that's right. Okay, it's fine. Okay, so we need to find a P prime of 1500. Um, so there's like kind of a shortcut for doing this that would involve um, knowing the stuff from um, section 3.3, which is two sections away. But by the time this is due, you're going to know that. And some of you may remember it. So um, I'll do the shortcut over here. Because some of you will have gone on or know this from before. So shortcut if you've done the power roll. For. So uh, if you've done the power rule, then you'll know the derivative of this function already. So let me just kind of bring this down here, kind of separate this. Um, so you would be able to do it this way. So you've got this um, p of x here, I'm just going to rewrite it, negative 0.01x squared plus 150x minus 9,000. Um, so the shortcut would be, well, cheating, but uh, p prime of x would be if we do the power rule, where you take the two down in front of this. So I'm using a rule that you're not gonna know if you're just in this section for the first time. So you would just bring this power down in front, which we did, subtract one from the power, which makes it go from a two to a one, so you don't see it because it's a one power. Um, the derivative of 150x is simply 150, and the derivative of 9,000 is zero. So this is your derivative here. P prime of X is negative 0.02 X plus 150. And then to calculate this at 1500, we need P prime of 1500. That means put in the 1500. So P prime of 1500 for X is negative 0 0.02 parentheses 1500 plus 150. And so you punch that into a calculator, um, negative 0 0.02 times 1500. Oh, sorry, typed it in wrong, 1500 times negative 0 0.02 plus 150, and it comes out to be 120. Okay, and for the units on this, um, the units would be units of P, 
over the units of x. And if you figure out what those are, the um, price, the P is profit, so it's being measured in dollars. And X is the number of systems sold. So that's dollars per system sold would be the units on that. You just type in 120 um, is what you type into the computer. Okay, now you're not supposed to know that until section 3.3. So let's actually go over how you're gonna find this derivative if you don't know that power rule. So if you don't know the power rule, then we use this for the derivative. Um, so according to the definition of the derivative, you know, P prime of A, um, P prime of A is a limit, a limit as H goes to zero of um, P of, it would be 1500, oh, sorry, A plus H, sorry. A plus H minus P of A over H. That's just the generic uh, formula for the equation of a uh, derivative. So for us, we're doing this at 1500. So P prime of 1500 is a limit as H goes to zero of P of 1500 plus H minus P of 1500 over H. So you have that, um, then you have to fill in what P is. P is a pretty long equation here, right? It's all this, but that's what you have to work out. So we end up with, I'll put my equal sign over here to give myself some more space because I think we're gonna need it. Um, so P of 1500 plus H, this, we're putting the 1500 plus H in for all the X's here. So it will be uh, negative 0 0.01 parentheses, 1500 plus H squared plus 150, 1500 plus H minus 9,000. All of that is just this. And then you need minus P of 1500. That's putting a 1500 into this equation. So minus parentheses and hard to write here. 1500 squared plus 150, 1500 minus 9,000. See, I didn't, I didn't even have enough room here. Let me move this. Okay. Um, minus 9,000 over H. I lost my limit. <laughs> it just it just scrolled off, right? Um, limit h goes to zero. Imagine that at the beginning. Um, so if you're trying to work this out here, limit as h goes to zero. Okay. So we're trying to work this out. We have h. So first of all, let's just calculate this entire thing over here. So I'm going to punch this all into a calculator at once, and we're just going to get a number. So negative zero point zero one times 1500 squared, okay? Then plus 150 times 1500, okay? Minus 9,000. And we get a big number. We get uh, 193,500, unless I made a typo. I don't think so then. Okay. So 193,500. Now, um, all of this needs to be worked out. So you have negative 0 0.01. Um, this is messy, but that's 1500 plus H. You have to multiply this out. It'll come out 1500 squared plus 3000 H plus H squared. Then multiply this out 150 times 1500 i'm just i'm just going to do that calculation uh 225,000. so plus plus 225,000 
plus 150H, right? Distribute the 150 and then minus 9,000, minus 9,000. Okay. Um, now, then what we got to do is actually multiply this negative 0.01 through here. Also, we'll calculate this 1500 at the same time. So 1500 squared is a number times negative 0.01. So when I multiply these two together, I get negative 22500. And then I've got 3000 H times negative 0.01. So 3000 times 0.01 it is 30. So I get uh, negative 30 H and 0 0.01 times h squared is negative 0 0.01 h squared. Uh, then here, I'm just gonna rewrite this. I have um, plus 22500 plus 150h minus 900, and then I have minus the 193500, minus 193500. Okay, over h. So we keep going here. Limit h goes to zero, and we need to add these all up. This number and this number, right? Those are the same, but opposite signs. So they are going to cancel. Okay, something has gone wrong here. I multiplied something wrong. Okay, hold on. I have to figure out what is being multiplied wrong here um, before we before we move on. Okay, so I'm gonna have to back this up and figure out what's wrong. So uh, let's see, this was 1500 squared. So 1500 squared times 0 0.01 is 22,500. 22,500, that's right, okay. Now, was this right? 1500 squared plus, uh, yeah, 3000 H, H squared, 150 times 1500. Let me check that. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So these are, these are issues with decimals here. Not decimals, but um, three zeros, two zeros. That's what I did wrong. I just wrote this wrong. There's an extra zero there. So those don't cancel. I, I canceled them, they don't cancel. This was 225000 plus. Okay, and this one's only got two circuits. So this one's, this one's two zeros, this one's three zeros. Okay, so here's what I wanna do. Take this number, take this number, take this number, take this number and add them all up. So I'm just gonna do them. So I got uh, negative 22500 plus 225000, right? First two, minus 900, minus 193500. I still have a mistake. There's still a mistake. Why is my life so hard. I know why, because I lost a zero there too. Oh man, why is this so hard? Okay, try again. Negative 22500, I'm starting here. This number plus this number plus 225000 minus 9000. Why was there a 900? Don't know. Um, minus 193500 zero okay that's that was the point i knew they had to be zero that's how i knew i was wrong every time um so these numbers just all add up to zero so add a, up to zero so the the constants add up to zero okay so all the ones that i highlighted just add up to zero so we're only left with what's left so what's left is, first of all, 
I've got this here, negative 0.01h squared. Let me just write that, negative 0.01h squared. Okay. Then I've got negative 30h plus 150h. So 150h minus 30h is uh, minus, no, plus 120h. And I think that's it, right? Is that all we have when we add those up? I think we just end up here, okay? So you, you do all this simplifying and you end up here. Now what's happening here is that you've got h, h, a. Everything has an a. So you factor an h out of the numerator. Factor out the h out of the numerator and you have left negative 0 0.01h plus 120 over h. Then because the h is factored out of the numerator and the denominator, you can, um, so we, what do we do? Factor out h. That's what we did. And then now what we need to do is we need to cancel an h top and bottom, and you're left with the limit now as h goes to zero. Uh, after we cancel the h on the bottom, we just have negative 0.01 h plus 120. And now we let h go to zero by plugging in h equals zero. And when we do that, what are we gonna get? Well, um, h equals zero is gonna go right there. So we're gonna have negative 0 0.01 times zero plus 120, which is 120, okay? And that's how we get the derivative. So that was more work than other ways of getting that derivative, right? Um, if you know the power rule shortcut, you can do it this much work, but we have to do this much work. Um, so much more tedious, right? When we don't know the rules, but the point was for this whole problem was that recognizing that when they ask for a rate, this is what they wanted. The derivative evaluated at some point. All right. Submit. Yeah, I got it right. Genius. Okay. Another question. So. Um, they say, example, um, position of an object moving in a straight line. Now, the reason they always say moving in a straight line on these or something like that is because we're not dealing with positions in 3D space and we're not dealing with positions even on a map. Right, there's no now north, south, east, west, right? So we only have like for movement, you either go forward or you go backwards. But there's no side to side because you would need more than one variable. You need an x and a y variable to represent forward, backward, side and side. So that's why they say straight line on these problems. Um so position of an object moving in a straight line after t seconds. Uh, is modeled by, so they're giving us a function for position, uh, s of t is negative 4 t cubed minus 1. So what they want is they want us to basically, part a, find average velocity first over intervals Uh, 2 to 2.1, 2 to 2.01, 2 to 2.001, 2 .001, and 2 to 2.0001, okay? And then after we do that, we are going to estimate the value of instantaneous velocity. at t equals two seconds okay and so basically the idea here is going to be pretty simple so um 
instantaneous velocity is velocity at a moment, right? At one particular moment. Um, so the smaller the time interval you use, the better estimate of uh, instantaneous velocity we're going to get. So these are all going to be estimates for um, part B, but this one's going to be the best one because it has the smallest time interval. This should be a one here. Um, so, so all of these, all are estimates of um, S prime of two, but the smaller time intervals, which are in the bottom, are better estimates. So like this one right here is the best. Okay, um, so we're basically going to look at these and then try to guess at what the numbers we're doing. Okay, so let's try to do this. So for part A, part A, so these are average velocities. Okay, so average velocity is calculated this way. So average velocity over um, over t1 to t2. I could use t0 and t1, I don't know, but I'm just using this. Uh, it's going to be given by an equation like this. So like s of t2, s is position, minus s of t1 over t2 minus t1. Right, and so that's going to be your average velocity, velocity average. Okay, um, so we're just going to be using equations like this. So if I want, um, you know, two to two point one, right? Um, I'm going to make a table here. So if this is time, if this is t interval. I don't even like that. Um, I'll say interval t1, t2. And then here is we want the velocity average, um, which is given by this formula. Okay, so when we're doing the first time interval from 2 to 2.1, we need s of 2.1 minus s of 2 over uh, 2.1 minus 2. Okay, so that's what you do, and you calculate this using the function that you have here. Let me copy paste that so I can see it down here. Duplicate. Let's just put it here off to the side so we can see it. Okay, so um, this is the formula that you use in order to calculate these. So we've got like negative four parentheses, 2.1 cube minus one minus um, s of two is going to be negative four two cubed minus one over 2.1 minus two is going to be 0 0.1. So you work this out here, uh, denominators there. Uh, if you work out this one, two cubed is eight. Eight times four is 32. So negative 32 minus one is negative 33. So this is actually gonna be a negative 33 there. Um, and for this one, you just have to punch it into a calculator. So we have um, negative four times 2.1 cubed minus one is 38. Is it? Yes. 38.044. They say six decimal places. Okay, well, I think that's just going to be enough to not cause an issue. Um, so then you just work this out on the calculator. So minus 33 over 0 0.1, negative 710, I guess, is what I got. I have negative 710.44. Now they say six decimals, but there are not six decimals. So this is what we get. Okay. Um, then you move on to the next one, which is 2 to 2.01. 2 
So we're going to use the same kind of formula as this, right? We're still going to go S of 2.01 minus S of 2 over 2.01 minus 2. So you have to work that out. So you have uh, negative 4, 2.01 cubed minus 1. Um, and then minus this, right? S of 2 is here and here. So the 33 that we got is we're just going to keep using the 33. Don't have to recalculate it. I know what the answer is. So we have this. Um, so you punch this into a calculator. I have negative 4, negative 4 times. 2.01 cubed minus 1. Um, and then that is negative 33.482404 minus 33 over 0 0.01. Work that out on my calculator. So minus 33 over 0 0.01. I get uh, what? Um, oh, okay, sorry, I have to retype this in. Uh, I have to re I have to redo all of this, I think. Um, sorry, let me let me I don't have to redo all of it, but let me let me just go over this. So uh, when we do this, right, this was negative um, 32, right? But then it's minus negative 32. So this was actually a plus. And this one here works out negative. So this is negative. I'm just going to check that number too while we're at it because moving back anyway. So 2.1 cubed. Oh, man. Um, that's one. Okay. Yeah. So, um, let me just recalculate this number cause this number is not correct. Uh, so it's supposed to be negative 38.044 plus 33 and then divide by 0 0.1. And the answer is 50.44. And again, there's not six decimals. Okay. Now when we get down here, um, I copied this result from here, but it was a plus, but this is supposed to be a plus. Let me redo this. This is a plus. Uh, this is a plus. And now we can do that calculation here. So negative 33.482404 plus 33 divided by 0 0.01. And I get 48.2404. Okay, now I'm gonna do one more, two to 2.001. So S of 2.001 minus S of two over 2.01 minus two. And uh, what we get is negative four, 2.2.001 one cubed minus one plus 33 that's s of two which is going to be the same every time over 0 0.001 so i got negative four times zero negative four times 2.001 cubed minus one yes. um oh no no, I guess it's right. Okay. Um, is negative 33.04 plus 33 over 0 0.001. So you work this out. So plus 33 over 0 0.001 and you get 48.02. 4004 like that. Okay. And so, um, I'm not going to do the next one. This one, but I think what the answer would be, would be 48.002400 and then four.
but they want six decimals of accuracy, which means I'm going to drop that forward. Um, and so what you're supposed to be looking at then are these values here. So first of all, we calculate the values. You have this one, which is supposed to not be very good. This one's supposed to be better. This one's supposed to be better. This one's supposed to be better. And those are the answers that you need for the homework, the ones that I highlighted uh, for part A. Now for part B, you um, try to estimate what S prime of two would be, which would be the velocity, what do they call it? Instantaneous, um, what would it be? Well, based on these numbers, right? Like 48.2, 48.02, 48 48.002, these look like they're getting closer to 48. Okay, so that's what you would, that's what you would want for an answer for part B. And we know that because, like I said, um, all of these are supposed to be estimates of the instantaneous speed or instantaneous velocity, but they get better and better as you go. And we could keep going forever. So like when you see 48.24, 48.024, 48.0024, you guess that these are heading towards 48. And that would be your answer. Okay. Um, so that's what you're supposed to do on those questions. Um, also, I think probably I have sign errors on everything because my brain is not working, but like, uh, this was negative and this is positive, but overall the result is going to be negative, 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 negative. Okay. I think those signs are correct now. All right. So, um, yeah. So that's how you would do that kind of problem. Um, average velocities are basically just calculating like these kind of slopes. And um, instantaneous velocity is, right now we were guessing at the value from a table. And they just explain all that in the, um, in the uh, homework. Okay, so let's do another question here. Uh, We're 47 minutes in, we'll do one or two more here, I think. Uh, example, um, so temperature in Tulsa at 1 p.m. is 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, over the next 10 hours, The temperature drops to 15 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, then rises to uh, 45 F by 11 p.m. So that's the next day. So um, the temperature, so the function, they give you the function describing this temperature, um, temp capital T as a function of little t, which is measuring hours past 1 p.m. is given by uh, t of little t is 1.2 t squared minus 12 t plus 45. And they give you a range for t that we're not going to care about. 0 to 10. All right. And what they ask for is what is instantaneous rate of change of uh, temperature at 7 p.m. Okay, um, this is what we have. So what's going on here, right? You have to understand what's going on. Uh, I'll make a little graph. You don't need the graph, but I'm making a graph anyway. Okay. 
So if you put little t here and you put big T here. So the temperatures are like temp in Tulsa at 1 p.m. is 45 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? And little t is hours past 1 p.m. So when little t is zero, that's, that's this time. 1 p.m. is zero, t equals zero. So we're at 45. So we're up here at 45, okay? That's where we start. And then what happens is over the next 10 hours, the temperature drops to 15. So it drops to 15, okay? And this is 10 hours later, right? Then it rises to 45 degrees again um, by 11 p.m. So it goes back up. Now, you'd have to figure out the times here, have to think about it a little bit carefully. So, um, so 1 p.m. is when it starts. 10 hours later is t equals 10. That's actually 1 p.m. plus 10 hours, so that's 11 p.m. So this is 11 p.m. right here. Um, and then this, the low is at 11 p.m. and then it rises to 45 degrees by 11 p.m., which is going to be um, 12 hours past that, right? Because this is, if this is t equals zero, which is 1 p.m., then 10, 10 hours later is 11 p.m. And if we want, um, wait, that doesn't even make sense. Okay. Sorry, 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 my bad. I read that I wrote this wrong. Let me back this up. So temp in Tulsa at 1 p.m. is 45 degrees. Over the next 10 hours, the temp drops to 15, then rises to 45 by 11 p.m. So this is 11 p.m., right? That's 11 p.m., which is, this is t, t, t equals 10. Back up to 45. So between 1 p.m., and 11 p.m., it, it drops to 15 and then comes back up. Now, I mean, that's not physically realistic, right? Like, it's not 45 at 1 p.m. and then drops to 15 and then goes back up to 45 in a 10-hour period. Uh, doesn't make sense, right? That'd be like the coldest part of the day is like 6 p.m. That's the exact opposite of what's true. So, um, don't worry about these being realistic. They are not. They're dumb. Um, but this is what we have. Okay. And we don't actually know where this minimum is. It's just somewhere between uh, somewhere between 1 p.m. and 10 p.m. This happens. Uh, all right. Now, what we're asked for is this. Specifically, what is instantaneous rate change of temp at 7 p.m. So in order to answer this question, right, um, I know that the instantaneous rate is a derivative. So let's say that I know uh, instantaneous rate is a derivative. So t prime of something, right? We talked about that at the beginning of the lecture, right? So capital T prime of something, okay? Um, now, what little t value is 7 p.m.? What is 7 p.m. in terms of the little t, right? So you have to think about it. So um, little t, little t is hours past 1 p.m. So 7 p.m. is six hours past 1 p.m., right? So that's t equals six. So um, t equals six because 7 p.m. is six hours past 1 p.m. And that's how t was defined, hours past 1 p.m. Okay, so what we're looking for is this. So we need to find capital T prime of six. And that will be our answer. That is instantaneous rate 
at 7 p.m. Okay, so we're looking for capital T prime of six. And we're gonna use the definition of the derivative, the one with the limit. So we use um, the definition of the derivative. Or again, if you're in section 3.3 already, you could do the power rule and that's okay. Right, so we want T prime of A in general is T of A plus H minus T of A over H with a limit in front, limit as H goes to zero, H to zero. So for us, we're looking for T prime of six. So T prime of six is the limit as H goes to zero, capital T six plus H minus capital T of six over H. We need to know the temperature function, but that was given. That was given in the problem right here, right? This is our, this is our T. I'll put it down here. So it's kind of out of the way. Um, so when you evaluate six plus H, you're going to be putting the six plus H in here. So you have, um, 1.2, six plus H squared minus 12, six plus H plus 45 parentheses, parentheses, minus T of six, which is just putting a six into this function. So 1.2 times six squared minus 12 times six plus 45. Okay. Over H. So limit as H goes to zero. I like to just calculate this side um, to get it out of the way because then I can just kind of go like this at the end and use all my room. So I have 1.2 times six, oops, sorry. 1.2 times six squared minus 12 times six plus 45, and I get 16.2. So this is 16.2. Now this right here has to be all multiplied out. So I have 1.2 times six plus H squared, you have to FOIL this. You get 36 plus 12 H plus H squared. Then here you have 12 times six plus H. So that's gonna be minus 12 times six, which is 72. I'll just multiply that out, minus 72. Then minus 12 times H, which is minus 12 H. And then you've got this plus 45. Okay. Now at this point, you've got to distribute the 1.2 through here. So 1.2 times 36, 1.2 times 36 is 43.2. 1.2 times 12 H, 1.2 times 12 is 14.4 h 1.2 times h squared is 1.2 h squared then i've got minus 72 plus 45 i may as well just add these together right now just because i can see them minus 72 plus 45 which is minus 27. so i've got this minus 12 h and then I just added the two highlighted numbers and I got minus 27. And then I got this minus 16.2 on the end from the other part. Okay. And then all of that is over H like that. So we do a little bit of simplifying. So uh, let's add up all of the numbers I'm going to highlight 43.2. 27 and 16.2. 43.2 minus 27 plus 16.2 um, should have been zero, wasn't, because I typed it in wrong. 43.2 minus 27 minus 16.2 is zero. Okay, so the numbers all add up to zero. just like always. So the ones that I highlighted are gone and I just have, um, I just have the 1.2 H squared 
and then I got 14.4 H minus 12 H. So 14.4 minus 12 is going to be 2.4. So I have plus 2.4 H over H like that. And we've done one of these before. It's exactly the same. We need to factor out the H in the numerator. Um, we get H 1.2 H plus 2.4 over H. Then we need to cancel an H. H H. So we have, oh, I don't need a fraction anymore because I canceled the denominator. So I have 1.2 H plus 2.4. Now, once you cancel that denominator, you can plug in h equals zero. So you put in h equals zero, you get uh, 1.2 times zero plus 2.4, which is 2.4. And that's your answer. So um, yeah, so what's happening is that uh, we interpret this answer as the instantaneous rate the instantaneous rate of change of temperature at uh, 7 p.m. is it was this it was T prime of six because six corresponded to 7 p.m. and it is 2.4 and the units were degrees Fahrenheit in the numerator and the time was being measured in um, hours. So degrees Fahrenheit per so 2.4 degrees Fahrenheit per hour. Um, okay, so let me just. Uh, Go through a couple of these just to see if there's anything else that's interesting. There's another calculate the velocity exactly the way we did. Okay, here's this different. Okay, this is different. And uh, we might have to stop here. We're an hour in. Um, okay. Example. Uh, population. That doesn't say population. Population. P. Uh, port city, which, you know, who cares about the name? Port city uh, from 1995 to 1999 is shown below. Let's write it. So it was year population. So the years was 1995. 1996, 1997, 1998, 1999. Okay, and the population was 5600, 5940, 5972, 5980, and uh, 6044. Okay, now what's the question, right? Because I haven't asked the question yet. I just gave you a table of data. They said estimate um, instantaneous rate of growth in 1997 by uh, averaging two rates of change. Okay, that's what they say to do. And so this isn't as complicated as it sounds. So um, we know that an instantaneous rate is a um, derivative, right? It's a slope of a tangent line, right? So um, instantaneous rate is a derivative, okay? Now, 
um, so an average rate is approximately the derivative, right? It's not the derivative, but it's approximately the derivative. And the way you calculate average rates are like, uh, we did them before, um, but like, you know, P of T2 minus P of T1. I'm using the P because that's population here, right? This kind of calculation, slope of a secant line. That would be approximately the derivative, okay? Um, now they say to average uh, two rates. So we're supposed to be calculating two rates to compute two rates. Why? Why do they do that? Okay, so the reason they do that is because we're trying to find the derivative at 1997. I think, right? Yeah, 1997, but you can't. So you can estimate it, but how do you estimate it? In order to estimate it, right, you need two times. Which, which two times do you use? Do you use 1997 and 1998? Or do you use 1996 and 1997? Which one's better, right? We know we should use 1997 because we're trying to do this in 1997. But which one do you use, 97, 98, or 96, 97? And so the answer is do both and then average. That's what they're saying. So what they want is this. Um, for rate in 97, they want um, us to do both. The 1998, 98 minus population in 1997 over 1998 minus 1997 and 1997 minus 1996 over 1997 minus 1996 right because you don't know which one's better so you do both and then we're just going to average the results and hope that that works out okay so this is the closest we can get to a derivative because all we have are a couple of numbers in a table. So we can't actually do what we did up here, right? There's no, there's no limit kind of stuff here because I don't know a function. I just have a table of a few numbers. So that's what we have to work with. So that's what we do. So instantaneous rate is a slope. This is how you calculate it. Okay, so fill in the numbers. So I'm not gonna keep scrolling up because I can, I can happen to see the table here. So like this one is P of 1998 was uh, 5980. Population in 1997 is 5972. Uh, 1998 minus 1997 is 1. So what do we get here? 15, uh, sorry, uh, 5980 minus 5972. So it's 8. So you get 8 people per year, basically. Right? This was people on top. And this was years on the bottom, right? This was years. This was people. So eight people per year. Uh, this one over here, population in 1997 was 5,972. Population in 1996 was 5,940. Over one again, and this is still people. This is still years. And um, 5,972 minus 5,940. Big change in population went up 32. So there, so we calculate these and then they say to average them. So average of the results. So like the P prime of 1997 would be approximately if you average these numbers, you would just do like eight plus 32 over two, right? So 40 over two, which is uh, 20, 20 people per year. And that would be the answer. So you're just calculating this kind of calculation, which we've done a few times, um, but they want you to do it twice and then average the results and hopefully get a better answer that way. Um, yep. 
So that's exactly the same as what we did. That's exactly the same as what we did. Okay, so I think that's gonna be it um, for this assignment or for this uh, lecture. We did all of the types of problems that are on that homework assignment. And um, you know, if you need help, come to office hours. I will help you. Uh, talk to you guys later.